Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome founder of The Cell, Larry A. Meisel. As the founder of The Cell, it is my great honor and pleasure to welcome you to this very important event. Tonight we have the opportunity to engage one of our nation's top leaders, Secretary of the United States Department of Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano, who has devoted her life work to keeping our nation safe from the threats we face. We, recently, we have been reminded that terrorism is a complex global challenge. From reports coming out of Europe of Al Qaeda plots, to attacks in Kenya, and to the ongoing debate over Guantanamo. It is clear, however, that only together can we confront these threats and defeat the deadly tactic and no one is more versed on these tactics than Secretary Napolitano. We're so honored to have you here. Before the program begins, however, I want to extend my sincere appreciation to Mayor John Hickenlooper for being here tonight and making this such an extraordinary event. Since his election, in 2003, Mayor Hickenlooper has demonstrated great leadership for the city of Denver. During his tenure as mayor, Denver has not only become the premier city of the West, but is now designated for international travelers and business. Mayor Hickenlooper has hosted a series of very important events from the Democratic National Convention to the Biennial of the Americas in which Denver was showcased as a world-class city. With this distinction, there also comes a greater responsibility to be aware of the possible threats and enhance the city's capabilities to ensure our community safety, all of which Mayor Hickenlooper has effectively addressed. We're fortunate to have his leadership as well as his continued support for the cell. With our ongoing programming series, and our nationally recognized exhibit, Anytime, Anywhere, Any Place, Understanding the Threat of Terrorism, the cell is evolving into a center to educate, empower citizens, and with the necessary knowledge and tools to help combat today's threats. Tonight's program is part of this effort. I encourage all of you to visit our exhibit with the tickets you were given tonight to learn more ways in which you can be involved in helping to keep our communities and state safe. There are a number of organizations that co-sponsored tonight's program. I would like to th thank them. The Anti-Defamation League, Colorado Concern, the Colorado Emergency Preparedness Partnership, Colorado Information Analysis Center, Colorado 30 Group, the Governor's Office of Homeland Security, the American Red Cross Mile High Chapter, the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, Urban Area Security Initiative, and the University of Denver. I want to express my sincere appreciation to our featured sponsor, the Denver Post. 
for their tremendous support in promoting this cell as well as this evening's very important event. I would also like to recognize the cell's board of directors, its leadership, Melanie Perlman and Courtney Meisel, the cell staff, Christina, Kristen, Karen, Susan, and D excuse me, and Doug. My assistant, Laura Teal and David Cohn, who have been instrumental in the success of tonight's event and all of our past symposiums. And now I would like to introduce a wonderful friend of mine and a wonderful friend of all, all of ours, the Honorable Mayor John Hickenlooper. Well, thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, I think you'll find this a very rewarding evening. Uh, get this important discussion on how is the U.S., how the U.S. is countering today's terrorist threats. Uh, I want to thank all the sponsors and co-sponsors for this evening. As always, I want to give special, uh, deepest gratitude to Larry Meisel, his daughter Courtney, Melanie. Uh, you guys have done so much work to make these, not just tonight, but so many of these evenings possible and really begin to to shift public sentiment. Uh, I think that you look at all the people that are here tonight, and so many of you play vital roles in our preparedness. Uh, it is a great privilege to have you all in one place. Uh, the evolving threat of terrorism continues to challenge us in this country at the highest level. Uh, this past year, we were starkly reminded in Colorado of just how close we all are to the threat of terrorism. Uh, we are now all aware of the, the threat from uh, Najibullah Zazi, the Aurora man who was trained by al-Qaeda operatives uh, who pleaded guilty to conspiring to blow up the New York City subway system. We also saw the arrest of uh, Jaime Pulin Ramirez, uh, a Colorado woman who uh, was connected to the so-called Jihad Jane case. Uh, while these cases demonstrate uh, the pervasive nature of terrorism, they also highlight Colorado's impressive ability to successfully address this trend and in partnership with the federal government. These are all, these are examples of where close coordination and, and, and instant communication uh, yielded significant results. I think in many ways, uh, Colorado became a model for the rest of the country through these events. And certainly, we deepened our partnership with the Department of Homeland Security and continuously look for opportunities to improve that relationship and our own ability to be uh, better prepared. Uh, tonight, I want to highlight just for a moment before we start uh, two Colorado endeavors particularly uh, that are where we are committed to fighting terrorism in our city, but also in our state and across the nation. Uh, the Colorado Information Analysis Center, one of the sponsors, you saw Larry uh, list them, better known as the CIA, CIAC, uh, is a a multi-agency, what they call a multi-agency fusion center. I don't come up with these names, but, uh, but it, it is directly focused on how do we prevent terrorist incidents in the state. Uh, they won the uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security National uh, Fusion Center of the Year Award, and I think this honor uh, being bestow bestowed upon the CIAC here was in large part the result of two things. First, the CIA sees impressive willingness to break down uh, traditional silos where information too often gets stored away uh, and begin to make sure between all of our different Colorado law enforcement agencies uh, and our federal agencies that they begin to, in, in, in real time, uh, exchange this information to the, to the, you know, you can imagine there is so much information that comes across, how can you most rapidly distill it you can only do that if you're sharing that information. Uh, second, it was a result of the CIAC's uh, forward-leaning posture on community outreach initiatives, uh, and, uh, including their award-winning efforts with the cell. Let me just remind, I think you've all heard me say this before, we certainly heard Larry say this, other cities don't have uh, an institution like the cell that allows us to keep top of mind that this risk is out there without being creating fear, but just reinforcing awareness. Together, the CIAC and CELL 
have created, I think, a number of new tools by which we expand that awareness. There's a, a, a public, a public awareness video uh, supported by training materials uh, that has uh, been praised by Homeland Security officers around the country. Uh, ongoing educational forums uh, of a variety, but similar to the one we are having tonight, uh, which A, serve to reinforce the need for public awareness, um, B, perhaps most importantly, the need for public involvement to ensure that our, our urban communities, all of our communities and our state remain safe. Um, we've worked hard to ensure that Denver is, uh, is fully prepared and it has the best and most modern tools to safeguard our community. We make sure that by providing training and in insights to our public safety community, we know that we can respond to and better yet protect against all kinds of nefarious activity. Uh, sometimes this requires that we look for ideas uh, we can import to Colorado from experts, uh, not just from outside our state, but sometimes from outside of our country. A couple years ago, we had the, one of the counter-terrorist expert teams from Israel came in and spent several days uh, working with our team at the airport to make sure that we were looking at, at, at every possible perspective uh, and trying to anticipate as much as possible. You know, sitting around reading uh, uh, reports and, 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 you know, having discussions is a good place to start, but it's not sufficient. And usually when you get these outside experts, we try to involve tabletop games whereby we can in real time begin to deal with the situation just as it might emerge. Uh, the next endeavor I'd like to highlight, uh, in two months' time, the Denver Urban Area Initiative, uh, uh, working in conjunction with the CELL, is going to host a national conference right here in Denver uh, called Shared Strategies of Homeland Security. Now, this is going to be a, a three-day three gathering, uh, December 13th through 16th, uh, and will feature renowned uh, international experts, uh, allowing participants not just from Colorado, this will be from all over the nation, uh, with latest techniques to prevent and, when necessary, respond to uh, acts of terrorism. Uh, the forum uh, will be practical, albeit with difficult lessons learned from around the world and will be shared with our men and women who are out there every day on the front lines. Uh, so please be on the lookout for more information. Mark that on your calendars, December 13th through 16th. Uh, this will be uh, an important and unique event. Uh, now it's my distinct honor to introduce tonight's guest, Secretary of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano. Uh, and she has an extraordinary breadth of service, uh, experience, and, and, and real success, right? A lot of people could have been in a lot of different roles, but it's that rare person who in each role they are, they become successful, yeah, and to a very high degree. Secretary Napolitano has done just that. Uh, as a former governor of Arizona, she was recognized not just within her state, but on a national level as a, a leader on homeland security, on border control, uh, and on all forms of, of immigration concerns. And certainly because of her, her track record and her success in addressing these issues, uh, she was named as one of the top five governors in the United States by Time Magazine. Now, since becoming secretary, she leads a colossal effort. And I don't think there's another word to say it, but a colossal effort to protect our nation from a host of natural and, unfortunately, sometimes man-made threats. Uh, she has worked tirelessly uh, all across this country to make sure there is a culture of readiness, right? And a willingness for people to keep working. Just when they think they know everything is when that you have the greatest risk. Uh, she is constantly working with her team to create new opportunities of how you keep it fresh uh, and different. Uh, broad, she's created whole new partnerships with international allies to make sure that we have, again, but we're not breaking down just the silos here, but the silos abroad as well. Uh, and furthering that, that, that critical information sharing uh, between law enforcement agencies at all levels in all parts of the world. And again, I can't more strongly emphasize how important this is and how significant it is. When we're talking about terrorism, I always think back to uh, President Lincoln. Uh, and, and one of my favorite quotes that President Lincoln said right before his first uh, first Lincoln-Douglas debate. He was talking about, someone was asking whether it was more important to be a senator or in the Supreme Court. No one ever dreamed that he'd be running for president or be president. And 
they asked, is it, is it really the Senate that has the influence or maybe the Supreme Court? This is after Dred Scott. And he said, no, no, you missed the whole point. It's about public sentiment. And then he went on and said, with public sentiment, nothing can fail. Without it, nothing can succeed. That is why the, those who mold public sentiment go deeper than those who enact statutes or pronounce decisions, legislators or judges. And I think that those words, that public sentiment is what matters, is critically important even more today than it was then, and especially around Homeland Security. We need to make sure that through initiatives like the cell, through evenings like tonight, where we share the expertise of one of our nation's leaders, uh, that we are moving public sentiment, right? That people are not fearful, but aware. Uh, Secretary Napolitano has prioritized on all levels citizen, program, citizen programs of increasing that awareness. Uh, the mo most recent one that I saw was, if you see something, say something campaign. And if you look at those terrorist incidents that were, were foiled by intervention, in most cases, it's a citizen being observant that allowed us to take action and prevent what could have been disasters, what could have easily been disasters. Uh, certainly, the importance of these types of programs have been made, made very clear in the last year. So, without further ado, let me introduce, again, one of the great leaders of our nation, Secretary Janet Napolitano. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Larry. Um, thank you to the cell. Uh, for uh, what it does on a daily basis, the example it sets, uh, the kinds of things that it is sharing across uh, the nation, uh, and uh, really uh, being uh, such an integral part of, uh, as the mayor just said, our efforts to make sure that everyone recognizes a shared responsibility where security is concerned. Uh, one government department, no matter how large, and uh, the department I lead is large. It's the third largest department of the federal government, uh, uh, and it encompasses many, many things. Uh, but uh, even with all of that, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that where our safety is concerned, where our security is concerned, there are shared, uh, uh, shared responsibilities. Uh, and it behooves us all to be aware of what those responsibilities are.